I want to reload my application and start up exactly where I left off. I want the window to be the same size and in the same position. And I want the buttons that I previously added to be reloaded automatically when I next run the program. I'm Hugh and in this video I'll explain how the .NET Configuration Manager can help you save and reload all kinds of information about your application. Here I'm once again going to be working on my application launchpad program. This lets me drag programs, documents or entire directories out of the Windows File Manager and create buttons for each of them in a window. When I want to run a program, open a file or view a directory, I just click the button. Now, if you haven't followed this series up to now, you can find out how to program all of this by following the lessons in the playlist, which is shown down below. Configuration Manager is a .NET class that can help you store information about your application in an XML formatted file. I won't go into the full details of the methods and properties of this class, because these are all explained on the Microsoft website. So to view the documentation, just press F1 over Configuration Manager in your source code, and that will log you on in your web browser so you can read all about it. Now, what I want to do here is to show you a working example so that you can easily save and load configuration settings to and from your own programs. Now, let's start with a very simple program that simply saves and loads the size and position of the application's main window. To test this out, I've created a new project called config.test with just this default main form. Now I want to save the form's size and its position when the program exits. So I've created an event handler method that runs when the form is closed. That's this one here. So I'll switch into source code and let you see the code more easily. Right, so this is what it does. It gets the X and Y coordinates of the form to give its position. That's the X and Y values provided by its location property. And it also gets its width and height. I then pass a string identifier for each value, followed by the value itself as arguments to my write settings method. And that's this method up here. And this opens the configuration file using the open exe configuration method. It reads any previously saved settings from that file using up settings dot settings. These settings are key value pairs. The key is a string that identifies a saved value. For example, the string width is the key and its value would be a string representing an integer such as 500 or 200. That is the width of my form. If the key is not found because it hasn't yet been written into the configuration file, its value is null. So this code writes the key, say width, followed by its value, say 500. If, on the other hand, the key already exists, then the value associated with it is written alongside the existing key. So if the key width exists in the file and its saved value was 400, but here the value is now 500, then this new value is written alongside the existing key. So the old value is changed to the new value. The save method writes the new values back into the file on disk. And refresh section causes the changed values to be reloaded, not strictly speaking needed here, but it is recommended. If an error occurs, a configuration errors exception object is trapped here. I don't really do anything with this apart from write to the console, but you could handle the exception in other ways if you need to. Now, when the program is next run and the form loads, let me show you that. So I've created a uh, event handler for that. And you can see that here, form load. So that's this event handler. This is what's going to run when the program is next started up. This method calls read settings. It's another method I've written. That's this one up here. This gets my previously saved settings, configuration manager dot up settings. Then it uses this syntax to look up my keys placed between square brackets. If a key is found, its value is assigned to a variable. If it's not found, then this empty string is assigned to the variable. 
Anyway, assuming I can read the data, I just create a new point with the x and y coordinates here passed to an int. That is, the string value read from the file is converted to an integer, and I assign the point to my form's location property. Then I assign width and height. If there's an exception, if, for example, there is no configuration file, because one hasn't been created yet, then the form's location, width and height are left unchanged. Now, let's see how this works. I'm going to run the program, and this is my form when it starts up. Now, I change its position. I'll put it down here, and I'll change its size. So if I grab this corner, I can make it smaller, close it down, and then start it up again. And you can see that the size and position have been restored as they were when I saved them. So that's because when the form closes, the form close event handler wrote the settings into my configuration file. When I started the program up again, the save configuration settings were read in and applied to the form. And the end result is that the form has now the same size and position as when I closed the program. So let's take a look at the configuration file itself. It's auto named using the name of the DLL file. So that's config-test.dll, and here the configuration file is called config-test.dll.config, so it just adds the extension .config. Let me drag this into Visual Studio so we can see what's in it. So this is the configuration file that my application has saved. Now, as you can see, it's created a section called app settings between these two tags, and in between those two tags, it's got a set of key value pairs. That's these values here. So on the left, you can see the keys. That's the keys that I wrote, x, y, width, and height. And to the right are the actual values, the integer values that uh, represent the, the size and the location of the form. Now, let me run this. So it starts up with that size and position. I'm going to change the size and the position. And when I close it, all being well, those new values will be written into my config file. So watch the config file as I close it and see if the values change. And sure enough, they do. Okay, so let's now see how I've integrated all this into my application launchpad program. Really, there hasn't been very much for me to do. I've added the write settings method. You can see that here. And also a read settings. That's up here. And those two methods read and write the form size and location. And they also write the path to the last opened data file. That is the file that defines a group of buttons on my launch pad. Here I've called that default prog group file, short for default program group file. Now let's have a look at that. Just find all references in Visual Studio so I can navigate to its declaration, which is up here. And you can see that it's just declared as a string. And when I read a value down here, that's in the read settings uh, method. So when I read a value from the config file, I look for the key default PG file. If it's found, I f pass the path to load program group. That's this method here. And this assigns the value to my default prog group file variable. This now stores the path to the currently loaded program group file. And then it loads that file, as I explained in previous lessons. It adds a button for each element, each file, program, or directory that was stored in the program group. That's using this method. Okay, so all of this has been explained in previous lessons. Now let's have a look at the form underscore load method. That's this one here. The form underscore load method calls read settings when the application starts. So the default program group file, the one that was open when I closed my application, is reloaded. And form underscore or form one underscore form closed saves that program file along with the form location and 
size. Now let's have a look at the configuration file, the XML configuration file for this application. So this is the data that's stored in that file. You can see that here is the key I saved, default PG file. And this is its value, a long path to the actual program group configuration file, which is saved in the program directory as saved.txt. And that's the file that contains the paths used to create each of the set of buttons. Just to remind you, uh, that's all this file contains. This is the, the saved.txt file. Again, all this has been explained in previous lessons in this series. So let's try this out. And when I run it, you can see each of these buttons in that uh, saved.txt file, the paths that were saved, a button is created for each of them when I run my application. And they, along with the size and location of the form itself, are restored automatically each time the program is run. Now you could, of course, save and reload all kinds of other information in the same way. For example, currently I save and restore the files in the recently opened file menu to a plain text file. I showed how to do that in previous lessons. But now I've got an XML config file, maybe it would be easier to save that information into that config file. And you could also save other things. Maybe you could uh, add an option to enable or disable the loading of the most recent program group at startup. Or you could have a toggle to change the size of the buttons and the selected size could also be saved into the config file. And while I'm sure you can think of lots of other possibilities too, and the possibilities will also change with the sort of application, of course, that you're particularly programming. Now, I hope you found this lesson useful and if you did, give it a thumbs up or you can leave a comment. For more information on C Sharp, see my book, The Little Book of C Sharp, and to be sure you never miss any of my YouTube videos, subscribe and click the bell so that you're notified whenever I upload new lessons.